we are all addicted. We are living in a golden age where for the first time in human history we have an abundance of everything. Fulfilling our desires is simply a click away. At the same time, we seem to carry an edge that cannot be scratched and it's keeping us from being truly happy. We are all entangled in addiction subtle grip, be it online shopping, Netflix binging or swipe, meet and repeat. But what if I told you that there is an antidote to this? Dr. Anna Lemke is a renowned psychiatrist, Stanford professor and addiction specialist. In this book, The Dopamine Nation, she condenses her years of experience to explain the balance between pleasure and pain. And by bringing better understanding to our neurobiology, she gives practical tips on how to live more fulfilling lives. Hi there, I'm Yvette and I'm a neuroscientist. Today marks the exciting new start of the new series called the Neurobook Corner, where I will review neuroscience-related books and highlight insights to help us navigate through our lives. In fact, today I will share with you five lessons that I learned by reading this book and also five practical tips on how we can implement them to our lives. So let's go! Lesson number one, understanding the pleasure-pain balance. In the book, Dr. Lampke describes this with a simple visual. Imagine a seesaw where on one side there is pain and on the other side there is pleasure. This balance, which can be also referred to as homeostasis is disrupted when we engage in pleasurable or painful activities, causing the scales to tip to one side or the other. The quicker and more intense the tip, the more pronounced the experience. However, with many things in our body, the scales prefer to stay level and will try with all its might to restore it. The author visualizes this resistance by having gremlins hopping on to the other side of the seesaw, trying to level the balance. The longer the balance stays tip, the more gremlins hop on the other side of the scales to try and bring the scales back to baseline. Overstimulating ourselves, whether through binge watching or overindulging in excess food, accumulates gremlins on the pain side. And when we hold these activities, the gremlins linger longer than the pleasure stimulus, resulting in a tilt towards pain. We can easily picture this by thinking of hangovers and post binge regret. Lesson 2. Our world of overconsumption. In a world inundated with feel-good messages, the constant pursuit of happiness and the avoidance of pain have become a fatal dogma. Shockingly, around 70% of global deaths are due to preventable diseases like obesity, smoking, alcoholism and physical inactivity, all of which stem from overconsumption. Dr. Lemke terms this phenomenon as our dopamine economy, coining the term from dopamine, the main neurotransmitter associated with addiction. The statistic highlights how our society is heavily driven by overconsumption. This constant demand for pleasure contributes to what the author calls a vortex of compulsive overuse. And it is further perpetuated by the work hard, play hard mentality, where compulsive overconsumption is promoted as a reward for a mind numbingly exhausting day. Even the 2019 World Happiness Report reveals a decline in happiness levels in wealthier countries. And this other study showed that higher income countries are associated with higher rates of anxiety disorders. Dr. Lemke connects this global phenomenon to the incessant search for our next high, tilting our mental seesaw towards pleasure. However, the more we indulge, the more gremlins accumulate on the other side, leading to a long-term imbalance. This shift in the hedonic set point means that our brains become addicted to certain activities, making them essential for us to feel normal. This brings me to implementation step number one. Recognize your addiction. Start by reflecting on activities that you compulsively engage in, which diverts your focus from more important tasks. This could be anything, such as social media scrolling, to gaming, to online shopping. What we learn from this book is that addiction is not just confined to alcoholism and drugs. It extends to any compulsive consumption that harms ourselves or others. For example, for me, it's binge watching reality shows on Netflix. Identifying these activities is the vital first step in regaining control. Lesson 3. Recovery through abstinence. According to the author, breaking free from the cycle of constant pleasure seeking is possible. She often recommends a dopamine fast to her patients, challenging them to abstain from their compulsive activities for a four-week period. This break allows the accumulation 
animated gremlins to hop off the balance, resetting the brain's reward pathway. Generally, she is initially met with resistance, as many patients believe that they require their chosen activity to maintain their normalcy. However, after the abstinence period, they often discover that their addiction was causing secondary issues, and actually they can live their normal lives without it. This liberation from the grip of addiction enables clear thinking and empowers individuals to make an informed decision about their future habits. Supporting this, a 1988 study by Brown and Schuchelt revealed that after a four-week abstinence, 85% of clinically depressed alcoholics no longer met the criteria for depression. This highlights the impact addiction can have on our well-being and the potential for positive change through abstinence. So implementation step number two, abstain for a month. It is crucial to note that the author, a clinical psychiatrist, advises against the step for physically dependent addictions like severe alcoholism, due to potential fatal risks associated with abrupt cessation. As we've learned, the brain's reward pathway can reset itself within four weeks of abstinence, offering a clearer perspective on our addiction. This period enables us to approach our issue objectively, viewing it from an outsider's perspective. Additionally, if it is causing us adverse effects, abstaining allows us to recognize and evaluate these effects providing insights into how our addiction impacts our well-being. Implementation Step 3 Establish self-binding rules If after following a month of abstinence you choose to reintroduce the activity, it is crucial to create a set of rules for yourself to not end up compulsively consuming again. For instance, in my case, one can limit watching TV to specific occasions, such as only with friends. These self-binding rules help regulate the time, place and situation devoted for the activity, helping you keep your life in balance. Lesson 4. The dynamics of pain and pleasure As emphasized in this video, leaning towards pleasure invites gremlins to hop on the side of pain, resulting in some sort of discomfort after our activities are done. Surprisingly, this principle also works in reverse. Delving into the realm of discomfort and pain brings gremlins to the side of pleasure, yielding a sense of joy afterwards. An example could be doing exercise. This phenomenon is sometimes referred to as the runner's high, where enduring a momentary pain leads to a natural high and an overall sense of well-being. Illustrating the concept of pleasure following a pain-first activity is a study conducted on a group of men who were immersed in cold water for an hour. A post-immersion blood analysis revealed up to five times higher levels of molecules associated with pleasure. Implementation step four embrace pain first habits that is actions that might initially cause some discomfort but result in long-term enjoyment so consider incorporating habits from this list which exemplify this principle equally important is steering away from pleasure first habits which are actually outlined here by prioritizing short-term discomfort we pave the way for enduring feelings of satisfaction and well-being in the future hey just before we move on to the last lesson, if this video has brought any value to you, I would encourage you to hit the like and subscribe button. This section will for sure activate my reward pathway in producing more videos for you. Also, as a side note, in this video, I do not go into the details of the neurobiology of the reward pathway and of addiction. If you are interested in this, I would recommend you to visit this link. Maybe it's here or down there. So with that, let's continue. Lesson five, breaking the cycle. Anna Lemke implies in the book that our addictive behaviors often serve as a means to escape life's challenges. This is made easy for us. A societal pressure to constantly be busy and hooked on stimuli is everywhere. Moreover, Lemke refers to smartphones as today's hypodermic needle, as they are constantly diverting our attention and feeding our addictions. She encourages us to break free from the cycle to sit down, engage in self-reflection, and savor the simple pleasures in life. A question she asks in the book, which made me heavily reflect, is In medicating ourselves to adapt to the world, what kind of world are we settling for? Implementation Step 5 Embrace boredom Contrary to the initial resistance, boredom holds the key to a richer life. A Harvard art and architecture professor's assignment illustrates this well. The assignment consists of going to a museum and spending 
spending three hours looking at one single piece of art. Initially, she is met with skepticism from her students. However, after they do the assignment, the students find that by embracing boredom, they unveil hidden details and messages in the artwork. Similarly, stepping off the overconsumption wheel allows us to appreciate the subtleties in our surroundings. And hopefully we will start to see the beauty in nature, our relationships and ourselves. These were the five lessons and actionable tips that I've learned by reading Dopamination. If this video prompted any form of self-discovery, I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. For a deeper dive into the book or the references mentioned, check the description. If this video resonated with you, you might also enjoy this video over here, which is how to overcome your fears when starting something new. And with this, thanks for watching and until next time. See ya!